Shalom. We give praise and the glory to Yahweh, Hashem, 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 Hakadosh. And all I said, the other apostles are going to move on to truth and peace, blessing, and salutation to the whole for And let's just get into it. For people who have experienced the Cold War firsthand, Doctor Strangelove is not just a cinematic masterpiece. It is not only possible. It is essential. In that era, almost everyone knew what manned ICBM and missile gap meant. And the sight of the mushroom cloud rising hits different. A nuclear close call is an incident that could have led to at least one unintended nuclear detonation or explosion. More than one nuclear close call occurred during the Cold War period. Perhaps the most serious of these the Cuban Missile Crisis nearly made the common fear of everyone come true. Fortunately, mankind has managed to get through this critical period without experiencing an extinction-level crisis. This is military mechanics, and today we will look at intercontinental ballistic missiles. Between 1940 and 1996, the U.S. spent at least $10.1 trillion in present-day terms on nuclear weapons development. It is estimated that the United States produced more than 70,000 nuclear warheads since 1945. This is more than all other nuclear weapons states combined. However, the American nuclear weapons arsenal has shrunk by 85% since the end of the Cold War. The American Air Force's decision to award Northrop Grumman the contract to replace the aging ICBM system brought the following question to mind. Is the nuclear weapons race back? Although not as prominent as the nuclear arms race of the Cold War era, the threat of nuclear attack has never been completely off the table. Russia and China are already increasing the capability and number of their ICBMs, respectively. Even North Korea has increased its arsenal, which was at roughly... ...was at roughly... And yeah... I just wanted to interrupt and be like... The reason why Russia, North Korea and China increasing their nuclear arsenal is because of um they're gonna use all them nuclear missiles man and john already let us know the number of these missiles as it says in um relation 9 and 16 this is the number of the arm of the horseman and this is going into the intercontinental ballistic missiles with 200,000 thousand i heard the number of them going into 200 million and the reason why that number is so large is because one ICBM can carry up to <clears throat> either 9 warheads or 14 warheads sometimes 21 but there'll be a lot of payload but yeah one ICBM can carry multiple nuclear warheads <clears throat> and at the end of the day What's actually going to do the damage is those nuclear warheads. <clears throat> and not only that, but let's get Jeremiah 51 and 11. This is made by the arrows. <laughs> and yeah, basically set them ICBMs off, launch them <clears throat> and gather the shields the Lord Yahweh shall have raised with the spirit of the king of the Medes for his devices against the Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord Yahweh shall have shared the vengeance of his temple and yeah man the Lord raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes not the actual Medes going into the ancient Medes who took down ancient Babylon but the Russians have been given the name of the Medes. Why? Because they won't be in that same spirit that the ancient Medes were in, which is the take down Babylon. Or you could even say the Russians are going to take down the doors of Babylon. 
<clears throat> and even then we can also go down to verse 28. It's a prepared inside the nations of the king of the Medes, the captain of the world rules of, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow for every purpose of the Lord Yehovah Shemal Shah shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. And then we also got Isaiah 13 and 17, and it says, Behold, I will stir the Medes against them, you yeah, being the Russians. And the, and the Dunno is talking about is America, man. We shall not regard silverness or gold, they shall not delight in it, meaning they're not going to care about briberies, they're not going to care about treaties. The only thing that's going to be on their mind is to destroy or fire them ICBMs. <clears throat> and also, let me go ahead and get. Um... Actually, you know what? I can continue reading. It says, The bows all shall dash the arm into pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, not being pregnant women, and the eyes shall not spare children. And we all know the people of the world, or those who don't understand judgment, they'll see this as something evil. But the Lord said that it was going to turn Russia back to being ruthless and having no pity. So, okay. I just decided to come outside, man, <laughs> and do the lesson. <sighs> so like I was saying, Ezekiel 38, verse 4, he says, And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horse and horsemen, all them covered, all sorts of army, even a great company, with bucklers and shields, all of them handed in swords. So... Yeah, man, the Lord is going to, like he said in Isaiah 13 and 17, stir up the meat. <clears throat> and even then, verse 10, it says, Thus every word Yahweh verse among Shah, it shall also come to pass. At that same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. So, like I said, they're going to be turned back to uh, <clears throat> the nation that once was going into the Cold War, the Soviet Union, or the USSR. It was at roughly 10 to 20 nuclear warheads in 2018. Let's not forget India and Pakistan, who have more than 100 nuclear warheads each. <laughs> and it was on also... Um, India and Pakistan, they're, they're part of Elon. And they're going, they're going to join the war too. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, Samuel chapter 15 and 28 says, Behold, my holy provision and the prince shall from the east. But the nation of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, being many vehicles. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear themselves fear and tremble. And yet when they give us their war cry. And it says, Also the Carmenians raging in wrath, going into the Iranians or the Persians. <clears throat> and even then, the Indians and the Pakistanis, they go back to Elam as well. <clears throat> which they're going to be joined with the dragons of Arabia or the Ishmaelite countries. So like it says, also the Carmenians range in Russia go forth as the wild bulls of the wood. So they're going, they're going to charge them into battle and they're going to have no fear. And a great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Syrians. And the land of the Syrians that he's talking about here is... America or the door of Babylon, as he makes mention. Here, Jeremiah fifteen eighteen, it said, Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, shall one shall host the power of Yahshua. Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria, and he's going to destroy America, man. Thermonuclear missiles. 100 nuclear warheads each. The United States has emphasized the need for a nuclear force that credibly deters adversaries, assures allies and partners, achieves U.S. objectives should deterrence fail, and hedges against uncertain threats. Enter U.S. nuclear triad. SSBMs, ICBMs, and bombers. Since the 1960s, U.S. nuclear... And you see, all those vehicles that you just saw, <laughs> they, can all, they can all fire nuclear warheads. So Babylon's going to be surrounded, basically. Let's get a description on that. Jeremiah 51 and 2, it says, Our sinners of Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. And yet, being all those that have nuclear capability, or that bend the bow. As I mismatched here, Jeremiah 50 29, called to give the archers against the Babylon, all ye that bend the bow. So, all those, all, all those that have nuclear capability, camp against it round about, and let none do her escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she has done, do unto her. For she have been proud against the Lord Yahweh, but she have been against the Holy One of Yahshua. Since the 1960s, U.S. nuclear triad through forces operating at sea, on land, and in the air provided the necessary deterrence. The triad significantly lowers the threshold for an attack against the U.S. homeland. Also, the triad's diversity enables mitigation of risk if a particular leg of the triad is degraded or unavailable. Eliminating a leg of the triad would weaken the combined strength of the force and simplify adversary attack plan. For example, without ICBMs, a conventional only attack on the limited number of submarine and bomber bases could significantly degrade the US nuclear arsenal without rising to the level of nuclear use. The triad is intended to ensure that no adversary believes it could launch a strategic attack that eliminates the US's ability to respond and inflict unacceptable damage. US ICBMs are the most responsive leg of the triad. This fearsome force is on alert 24-7, 365 days a year, and controlled by ironclad nuclear command control and communications. US ICBMs are spread out in 400 hardened underground silos. In addition to this, there are another 50 silos kept in warm status. These are assigned to three separate military bases, presenting an intractable targeting problem for any potential adversary. ICBMs can be launched and reach targets within minutes, creating a nearly insurmountable targeting problem for adversaries. 
Should the United States need to respond quickly to an emerging attack, US ICBMs provide the most rapid response option with assured connectivity to the President through national command authorities. ICBMs also provide the ability to upload additional warheads which can hedge against technical failure <clears throat> Here's Psalm 7 and 11. It says, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will be his sword. He have bent his bow and made it ready. And just like how the US has ICBMs, so does Russia and all their allies, and they're going to fly them warmen. <clears throat> and it says, he have also prepared for them the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. So against the daughter of Babylon or America or the whore. Here, <coughs> Jeremiah 50. And 14, it says, Put yourselves in array against Babylon, round about, all ye that bend the bow, shoot her, spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord Jehovah Shem Hosheh. So, yeah, man, all, all the ICBMs are going to be used, every single one. Technical failure in one of the other legs of the triad, or respond to adverse geopolitical developments. Although the ICBMs can carry up to three nuclear warheads, each is currently loaded with only one. This provides targeting flexibility, especially for some scenarios of an adversary's limited use. Finally, the day-to-day -day alert of ICBMs takes the burden of a daily alert posture off the bomber force. This frees up many bombers from continuous nuclear alerts to concentrate on potential conventional missions. The hardened and dispersed nature of US ICBMs requires a potential adversary to totally commit to a massive attack on the US homeland. There's obviously no other way to disable all US ICBMs. This enhances the power of deterrence. However, most of the systems that compose the triad are operating well beyond their original design lives. The land leg of the triad are Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles. Having undergone multiple life extensions, they were first deployed in 1970 and have been operating for 50 years. After conducting an analysis of alternatives, the Air Force determined that a replacement ICBM would be similar in cost to a Minuteman III life extension program. For the MM3 to be usefully extended, the United States would need to replace a number of major components. Even if accomplished at reasonable cost and on time, this would still fall short of the department's requirements. Some of these requirements are accommodating modern safety and security features and technologies. On the other hand, the ground-based strategic deterrent will incorporate low-risk, technically mature components. This will feature a modular architecture that can incorporate emerging technology to adapt to rapidly evolving threat environments. And it will be easier to maintain than the MM3. Finally, the GBSD program will also modernize the launch facilities. This will improve command and control and increase safety and security. These advantages will save on costs and provide great value as GBSD operates well into the 2070s. The Air Force finally announced a name and designation for this new intercontinental ballistic missile system. The new name is LGM-35A Sentinel. Sentinel is being developed by Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman is currently planning a first flight test at the end of 2023. It will join the ranks of Atlas, Titan, Minuteman and Peacekeeper as the land-based ICBM missiles that have maintained America's nuclear deterrent since the early 1960s, beginning with initial operational capability in 2029 and full operational capability by 2036. In these days, when Russia is making nuclear threats more frequent, we understand better 
that the twilight of nuclear weapons is yet to come. I know, right? Because these missiles are going to be used, man. We're going to see them soon. We're going to see them airborne. We're going to see them flying. <clears throat> and we're going to see them over there in the valley of Yahushua Park. Or over there in the east. <laughs> but yeah, man. Call the Yahweh, Shem Hashem. And Shalom.